This is a brief uh, presentation about graphing elementary functions with some additional examples. The first function we're going to look at is a constant function, which is very similar to a horizontal line. So if you have a function notation equal to a constant number, that considered to be a horizontal line uh, function. Now, whatever value you pick for the input x, the y value will be the same because y is, in this example, is equal to 6. Now we're going to plot these points on the rectangular coordinate system, and then once we connect them, we will get a horizontal line. Let's look at another example. In this example, we have a function g of x equal to negative 4, which is the same as y equal to negative 4. So regardless of the input value for x, the output will be negative 4. We're going to go ahead and plot these points. And as you see, when we connect them together, we're going to get a horizontal line. Our next example is about a linear function. Linear function is pretty much like slope intercept form. So we have f of x equal to mx plus b, where slope is m and y intercept is the order pair 0, b. So in the example that you see on the screen, the y intercept is 0, negative 4, and the slope of this linear function is. 5 over 3. The number in the numerator will tell us how many units to rise and the number in the denominator will tell us how many units we run. So first we start by plotting the point and use the rise and run of the slope to get to another point. So from 0, negative 4 we're going 5 units up, that's what the rise is, and then 3 units to the right that's what the run is. And then after that, we're going to connect these two uh, dots together, these two points, and we're going to get a linear function graph. Now make sure that your line has an arrow at both ends indicating that this linear function or this line extends beyond what you see on the screen. Let's look at another example. This g of x is a linear function with a y-intercept 0, 3 and a slope of negative 2 fifths. Again, we're going to plot the point and we're going to use this slope to get to another point. Since the slope has a negative rise, we're going to go down 2 and then we're going to run 5 units to the right. So we started with the y-intercept again, I went two units down, and then moved five units to the right. We connect these two points together to get a linear function graph for the function given in this example. Once again, make sure that your arrows are at both ends of this uh, graph. The next function is square function. Square function is got a term x to the second power. These are just elementary functions. Once you learn more you know, about these graphs, then you'll see that there are other conditions and uh, parameters involved in graphing these. Of course, we're going to study these more in details throughout the semester. Right now, we're just doing it by plotting points. In our example, we have x minus 3 to the second power minus 5. Well, minus 5 is a constant term. Let's not worry about that at this time. We start with the input value 3, and then we're going to work our way from 3, 1 unit to the right, 1 unit to the left, which is 4 and 2. Then we're going to go 1 more unit to the right and 1 more unit to the left, which we get 5 and 1. We're going to plot these plug these values into the function to get the y values, to get the output, the function values. 
Well, after you do the calculation, you get yourself a group of ordered pairs. We're going to plot those ordered pairs, as you see on the screen, and then we're going to smoothly connect these points together. And the graph, in this case, would be a U-shape opening upward. As I said, we're going to study these uh, in more details in other chapters of this course. Let's look at another example. This function is a square function, but keep in mind there is a negative in front of the term that is to the second power. Now, we're going to start at negative 2 because we have x plus 2 in, inside of the parentheses. And then we're going to pick numbers that are to the right and to the left of negative 2. So we go to negative 3 and then negative 1. We go to negative 4 and 0. Now, the more points we have, the better graph we're going to get. The, the point of this presentation is give you a general idea how you approach about graphing these with just points. So, we're going to evaluate the function at these values for x to get the corresponding y values, or the output. You can double-check my calculation, but let's assume that these are correct, and if they're not, we can correct them in class. But for right now, I have the points, and I'm going to uh, plot the points, and then we're going to connect these points smoothly together in this case, we're going to get a U-shape that is opening downward. Our next example is square root function, which is in the form of square root of x. Now, in my example, under the radical, I have x plus 4. So for my input values, I start with the opposite of plus 4, which is negative 4. I'll go one unit to the right, one unit to the left, another unit to the right, another unit to the left to get a general idea of what the function is going to look like. So that's why I pick negative 4, negative 3, negative 5, 0, and 5. Now, you notice that at negative 5, the output will be undefined. That's the indication that negative 5 is not in the domain of the function f of x. I also try to pick values that makes under the radical to be a perfect square, so we can take a square root of that value. For example, if I pick 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, and radical 9, of course, is 3, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So we're going to plot these points, and then we're going to smoothly connect these dots together to get the graph of f of x equal to radical x plus 4, and then minus 2. As you take other courses in math, you will learn that uh, there are other ways to graph these, but for right now, once again, we're graphing by simply picking smart values for input, and then compute the output values and connect the points in order to get the graph. Now, this graph has arrow in one end. As you notice, negative 5 was not in the domain. Actually, anything smaller than negative 4 will not be in the domain. That's why we don't have anything to the left of negative 4. Let's look at another example. So, under the radical in this example, we have x minus 1. So, I start with positive 1. And then I go to the right one unit, I go to the left one unit, and so on and so forth. Once again, since we're dealing with a square root, we want to be mindful of picking values for x that makes the expression under the radical to be a perfect square. So that's why I picked 5 and 10 in this example. Also keep track of the negative in front of the radical here. So once we enter these values for x and we evaluate the output, we get uh, a group of order pairs that we can plot. Now notice 0, uh, once you plug it in to the radical, you're going to get a square root of negative 1, which is once again undefined, meaning again 
0 is not in the domain of this function. Now that we have our points and we plot them, we can connect them together to get a graph for this function. Our next example is absolute value function. Now, absolute value function, ultimately, in this form, it's going to have a V-shaped graph. It's either opening upward or downward. Again, more details on this as we go uh, later in the semester. We're going to talk about this more. So inside of the absolute value, we have x minus 4. So that's why I start with x equal to 4 for the input. And I pick values to the right and left of 4, so I pick 3, 5. Then I pick another values to the right and left, that's why I pick 2 and 6. So these are going to be my input values. We're going to plug them in to the function to get the output values. We're going to connect these points that we just plotted and then connect them to get the graph of the function. So this one has a V-shape opening upward. Let's look at another example. Now, in this uh, absolute value function, we have a negative in front of the absolute value. But the main thing is, inside we have x plus 3 that we're taking absolute value of. So we start with negative 3 for the input, and then pick values to the right, pick values to the left, just like we did in the other examples, plug these values into the function to get the output values and plot the order pairs. You can check my calculation to see if I did them correctly or not, but once everything is plotted, checked, then we can connect these dots and we get a V-shape that is opening down. So this is the graph of this function. I hope this presentation helped you understand graphing elementary functions. And as I promised you, we're going to go ahead and do some more in class.